Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is July 29th, 2016, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, FBI boss James Comey is warning Americans that Islamic State killers are on the way. And he says we can expect a terrorist attack of a magnitude greater than anything we've seen before. Meanwhile, Obama and Hillary continue to throw down the welcome mat for Islamic refugees. Then, O'Keefe strikes again. Project Veritas exposes the unraveling of Democrats at the DNC as the Bernie mob attacks Hillary supporters. No, DNC, we won't vote for Hillary. And if Hillary is, how much has Hillary paid Hillary you to guys to come out here? Hey, 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 all that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Yeah. Jammed up with Alex Jones. From InfoWars. Info yeah. The FBI is now saying that the end of the Islamic State will not end radical terror overseas. These are the words of FBI Director James Comey. He says not all Islamic State killers are going to die on the battlefield. He compared it to the situation in Afghanistan in the 1980s when the CIA recruited an armed Mujahideen to defeat the Soviet Union. Remnants of the CIA project subsequently evolved into Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. This is an order of magnitude greater than anything we've seen before, Comey said. A lot of terrorists fled out of Afghanistan. This is 10 times that or more. Basically saying that when you take them out in one area, they're going to go to another area. And I do agree with this, but you have to understand whether it's Comey now or his, uh, I guess, good buddy, Mrs. Clinton, who said many years ago, the people that we're fighting against today are the same people we armed, uh, referring to the Mujahideen. This is a cycle that continues to grow. We talk about this all the time, or at least I talk about all the time, uh, whether it's uh, people in the Middle East or giving guns to the Mexican drug cartels. Uh, they have this, uh, this mentality that they want to give guns to people to take out an enemy and then hope that that person is going to do what they want them to do. But a good example of this, let's just uh, bring it here to domestic terms. Let's say you have the Crips and the Bloods in your town, right? So the police chief says, okay, the Bloods have too much territory. They're tearing up a bunch of stuff. I'm going to give guns to the Crips so the Crips can go fight the Bloods. Lo and behold, the Crips beat the Bloods. Do you think the Crips are going to go to their local gun buyback and turn in all their firearms? No, you think they're going to give up this territory they've just won from their enemies? No. So this is the type of mentality that continues to be repeated. It's nothing new. It's more than likely going to continue well into our next administration. And this is just something you need to be aware of. And this is when... I hear, you know, about military interventions. I always cringe a little bit. I'm like, what exactly is the end game here? Because you see groups like uh, the Syrian rebels we've been talking about for the past couple of weeks. Um, they're overseas cutting off a little boy's head. It, it, you know, saw his head off with a knife. And then they say, oh, it was an accident. It was a mistake. It was something, uh, a momentary indiscretion or something to that like. Uh, just the State Department apologists making up these excuses. And this is fresh off the FBI, of course, uh, doctoring the transcripts of the Orlando shooter. And that's the thing with the FBI. They're, they have a ability to really do something good and really do something positive. There are plenty of good people in the FBI who keep the bad guys at bay, but then you have the people who, not just in the FBI, but in other alphabet agencies as well, that coddle people into doing these crimes and to where they're actually supporting them in doing that. But that's enough of that. Now let's talk about some different news, talk about some domestic news, talking about firearms here. And it's often a talking point when you hear these anti-gun groups or these uh, reasonable gun control measure groups. They're saying that the simple fact that firearm ownership exists, exists here in the United States is anti-woman. You don't support women's rights if you support the Second Amendment, which is completely bizarre. Because they will tell you the stories about some guy who used a gun to force a, a young lady into a very unfortunate situation. But they don't tell you the stories about the young ladies who pull out a gun and blow the bad guy's head off. And this is a rape survivor. She was talking to Fox News, and she was saying when she was attacked, she did wish that she had that firearm. The thought of owning a handgun terrified me until one morning, a stranger broke into my apartment and raped me. He had evil in his eyes, and I was helpless. My fear of firearms disappeared when I got my second chance at life. Your right to own a gun for self-defense is at risk in this election. Hillary Clinton would take away your rights. Self-defense is your right. Don't let it be taken away. The NRA Political Victory Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. Now, in other news, the DNC is winding up in 
Our crew is out there along with James O'Keefe, of course, of Project Veritas. He's brought you many great reports over the years, uh, talking about things like ACORN and many other things as well. And now he had this thought while he was at the DNC. There's a very large and very vocal group of Bernie supporters, you know, out there uh, supporting the ideals of Bernie Sanders. I won't say so much the man. They see that now the man is a fraud, but the ideals of Bernie Sanders. And O'Keefe said, well, what's going to happen if I dress up like a Hillary Clinton supporter and go out amongst the people and this is what happened, it's rather, rather shocking. He's At this over. point, what difference does it make? I don't My care. brothers and sisters go to jail, she gets a paycheck. How is that qualified? I'm sorry. How is that qualified? I don't appreciate being yelled at. I'm just trying to support our first female president, to be honest with you. I can't talk normal with you. Yelling, yelling the it's all I can do. There's people in the network. We want you to go to our Facebook page. If, if Hillary is uh, if Hillary is still your, your top candidate, hey, absolutely not. Hey, wow. Hey, hey, I don't care. And this is just one of many examples of these tolerant leftists, uh, these socialists, and how they act. Whether it's they're tackling James O'Keefe or it's the rallies we go out to, they're screaming in people's faces, calling them uh, racial epithets, or saying that you're not a real Hispanic or you're not a real black if you vote for candidate X, or they're throwing eggs in young ladies' faces, they're yelling at uh, people walking around with their babies, they're throwing uh, fireballs and barricades at the cops and the cop horses, they're throwing rocks at other demonstrators, and it continues to happen, but everything's Donald Trump's fault. These guys can go out here and do all these uh, horrendous deals, or even in that example with O'Keefe, they'll say that it's Hillary's fault that that happened. No, it's not Hillary's fault, it's not Bernie's fault, it's not uh, Trump's fault, it's the individual's who choose to participate in those actions. And uh, there's a longer, longer clip of that James O'Keefe exchange, and you can see the guy you know, with his uh, very sorry excuse as to why he thought that was okay to physically attack James O'Keefe for the heinous crime of holding a sign in the United States of America. But these are the mentalities of these leftists. I keep trying to tell you about this. We've demonstrated this many times, whether it's Planned Parenthood or the political rallies or the gun rallies or the anti-gun rallies. These are the type of people who show up there to do actual damage, and that's case in point right there. Now with this, as we're talking about uh, these large crowds that can get rather unruly, we're seeing that Virginia police are now training for civil unrest and racial riots. Now, it's very sad that we're to this point where the police are starting to do these things more frequently. Of course, we do know that these things do happen, and I'm not trying to downplay that at all, but it's a very fine line between using your equipment responsibly and not using it responsibly. A case in point, when we went to Ferguson before, you know, things got super crazy, the cops were out there on the MRAPs aiming guns at people in the crowd. I think that incited a few people. They were very upset. And why wouldn't you? Like, you cannot aim a gun at a person. They weren't just holding a gun. They were actually aiming it at people in the crowd, looking through the scope and all that. So that type of stuff is definitely uncalled for, but there are situations when you do need uh, to have preparations. So it's a very fine line. And let's take a look at this video of this training. This might be like chaos, but this took weeks of preparation in one shape by a riot right here in the valley. You might remember Spring Fest of 2010. America is paying attention to the recent rising political and racial tensions causing scenes like this. And that's why newer officers with the Harrisonburg Police Department and James Madison University are out here today learning how to deal with civil unrest. Now, I'll be the first to admit that our next story isn't the hardest hitting news of the day, but it is a sign of the time. A car nearly ends up vertical after a driver swerves ferociously in response to a GPS. So basically, it's a story out of Vermont. We see these stories all the time of people driving into bodies of water or over mailboxes or into other cars because the GPS told them to do so. It's just people not thinking and just so passively that they will do anything that anybody tells them at any time, and that's a sign of the times. Now, talking about believing anything that you're told, this is a great article, pretty much a throwback article from Mrs. Uh, Cheryl Atkinson. If you guys recall, she used to work for CBS News. She did a lot of Fast and Furious work. Uh, she exposed uh, Hillary lying about getting shot up by, by snipers and a lot of other stuff. And basically, she has this story about AstroTurf, the opposite of grassroots. You think about grassroots, something growing, something uh, natural, something real. And then you have the AstroTurf, the fake version of that, and she's talking about astroturfers in the media and in activism. And I like this list she has here. Number one, uh, and she says straight in the report, it's not a scientific survey, but 
I think it's still accurate nonetheless. Uh, moms demand action in every town for gun sense. I think that's good at the top. Also, you have Media Matters. Uh, it's a very long list. You have Salon, Vox, the White House uh, Press Secretary, <laughs> which is the, definitely a good one. Uh, your major networks, of course, MSNBC, Slate, all those usual characters, suspects, and also Jon Stewart. And as we're talking about Jon Stewart and the other late night guys, the other talk show guys, uh, we've seen a steady stream of Democratic celebrities come out and pretty much shame Democrats for not following Hillary. You Bernie or bust people, you're being ridiculous. That's what Sarah Silverman said, the comedian. And now we have the comedian talk show host, Seth Meyers. He's now attacking his own audience for not supporting Mrs. Clinton. Look, I know you're Bernie or bust, but the results are in. Bust won. We don't have time for this. Donald Trump is ahead in the polls. The house is on fire. Stop crying because we're not putting it out with your hose. Hey, pay attention. We are on the cusp of electing a racist demagogue, and that never ends well. I don't know which class you ditched to go to those Bernie rallies, but I have a feeling it was history. And just what happened to, I support Bernie Sanders, I support for the ideals that he stands for. I want to bust up the big banks, and I don't want these career politicians, I don't want these establishment politicians. All that goes out the window to support a candidate. And it's not just something that Democrats do. Any political party could do it. But this is a very good case in point, and this is why, exactly why, I'm not affiliated with any political party, because they do stuff like this. I'm not going to support a candidate or a policy or anything else, no matter what. I want somebody who stands for the the uh, the mentality, the morality of the party, not somebody who's just there because they got the most vote and stole the election. Now, we're going to end with this. If you guys recall, Alex went out to the RNC, and there's a comedian who was invited on the stage. His name was Eric Andre. And he went on the Colbert Report, or I guess uh, more accurately, Colbert's late night show. He's taking over for David Letterman now. And he was saying that, I have never been more scared from my life. I was in this open carry state. I thought somebody was going to shoot me. I was going to stab me. And the way they edit this, I want you to be very conscious of this when you watch this video. They edit the video to make it seem like uh, Andre rushed the stage and snatched the microphone from Alex. That did not happen at all. We have the full video. We played it several times. Alex invites the guy on the stage. The only reason he wanted to get it off the stage because the guy started talking about goofy stuff like, Alex, come have sex with my wife. He's like, man, I'm, I'm not here to talk about that stupid stuff. So, and then the guy, you know, he, he's like, oh man, they harassed me and did all this other stuff. I'm like, no, bro, you're not funny. You're a joke. You're the reason why people aren't watching mainstream television. And here's a good look at this. Uh, we, we'll be back right after these messages with more special reports. We have the late show CBS with Stephen Colbert. And I guess his name is Eric Anders, who wanted to come up on stage, so I had him on stage. He said some pretty silly stuff at one of the speeches I gave at the RNC. But I'd make a big deal about it when he came and disrupted us. I didn't call the police on him like the Young Turks did. But you notice Colbert here tries to act like I'm waging war on information. He thinks his audience is stupid and doesn't know what InfoWars is. Information Warfare, or IW, is a concept involving the use and management of information and communication technology in pursuit of competitive advantage over an opponent. Information warfare may involve collection of tactical information, assurances that one's own information is valid, spreading of propaganda or disinformation to demoralize or manipulate. That's black propaganda. We don't use that. The enemy and the public undermining the quality of opposing force information and denial of information collected opportunities to the opposing forces. Information warfare is closely linked to psychological warfare. The United States military focus tends to favor technology and hence tends to extend into the realms of electronic warfare, cyber warfare, information assurance, computer network operations, attack and defense. But in our term, it is mostly used in information operations and more human-related aspects of information use, social network analytics, decision analysis, and human aspects of command and control. We, that's, we, we expose how things really work. We get into the nuts and bolts. We, we read from bills. We go through the gatekeepers and go right to the data. Now, that's what information warfare is in a quick snapshot Vic Vreeland, who came with the name InfoWars, had been in, uh, was it Air Force Intelligence? And he said, what you do is information warfare. And I, and I knew what InfoWar was. He goes, here, let's go see if it's available. And I registered that little baby in 1996, sitting at his house. He was the deputy fire chief at that time. And that's why it's called InfoWars. And no one else thought to go get it. Well, that's what we do. 
And it was, I think, meant to happen that that took place. But here they are making jokes on their audience, a form of information war, against them, hoping they think that I'm at, I'm at war with enlightenment when it's the opposite. Here it is. Yeah. I love it. awkward as myself and putting myself in embarrassing situations. Do you, do you enjoy that? Yeah, I love it. I get, I get very... <laughs> oh, yeah. What a douchebag. Yeah. Red hot when I do it. Yes. You did that recently. You went to uh, the RNC. You went to the RNC. <laughs> went to the RNC and looked like a goddamn jackass. Steve Colbert, douchebag. And see, I did too. It was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, it was exciting. Yeah. Oh yeah, very exciting. What an idiot! Look at him. Look at that freaking hair. Can't even afford a haircut. Looks like a douchebag. Looks like a cross between Bozo the Clown. And um, what was that? Uh, uh, not Krusty, but Sideshow Bob from The Simpsons. But he's a real guy and a real douchebag. Let's continue. And uh, with Alex Jones. From InfoWars. InfoWars. Yeah. He's, uh... Hmm. Making fun of Alex Jones and look like an asshole on the stage. Interrupting. Said beautiful things like, uh, I want you to have sex with my wife. Oh, where are the chemtrails and other th stupid things like that? Vile things. He's in a war against info. <sighs> These guys are in an, a war against reality. What they want to do is get the sheeple to laugh and ridicule because that's the only thing that they have. This is the main reason I don't watch mainstream TV. He's so against the war. He's still on a war against info. He doesn't want to even know about the nation. He don't care about Wow, this is so sophisticated. Boy, such a brainiac. About the nation. He doesn't want any nation. Just the info. I'm wow. It's just amazing how smart these douchebags are. And that's why nine times the show, the crowd enjoyed your appearance as much as I did. No, nobody enjoyed it. The only reason why the seals and the sheeple are laughing is because they have big signs telling people to applaud. Or no one would be uh, laughing at this stupidity. Free tickets. Oh, boy. This is entertainment in 2016 America. Douchebag. CBS is trying to give a copyright strike for this. Could you believe it? 38 seconds of two assholes thinking that they're funny, thinking that they're sophisticated. All they showed the world is their assholes. <laughs> the final night of the DNC didn't disappoint. Well, that is if you enjoy watching a political travesty in full swing, more akin to a cult of veiled corruption than the remnants of the ragged Democratic Party. Honestly, one would have to assume the entire grand finale of the DNC was difficult for anyone with a shred of decency witness. You people sit there day after day, night after night, all ages, colors, creeds. We're all you know. You're beginning to believe the illusions we're spinning here. You're beginning to think that the tube is reality and that your own lives are unreal. You do whatever the tube tells you. You dress like the tube. You ate like the tube. You raise your children like the tube. You even think like the tube. This is mass madness, you maniacs. In God's name, you people are the real thing. We are the illusion. Jettisoned from the lair of the mainstream media teleprompters, doling out 40% more airtime to the DNC over the RNC, a Bernie delegate was stripped of his credentials for holding an unauthorized sign that read, Stop TPP. James O'Keefe, disguised as a Hillary supporter, was physically attacked by an angry mob cordoned off behind fences erected all around the convention center, while merchandisers struggled to get a return for anything Hillary-related. Even the weather wasn't cooperating with the monumental farce 
as flash flood warnings were in effect. Back inside the DNC, Hillary's campaign manager labeled Hillary a tough sell, while white noise machines were brought in to drown out the inevitable booing that had plagued the entire event. Inevitably, lunacy prevailed. Self-proclaimed Illuminati witch Katy Perry groveled, Both of my parents are pastors and staunch Republicans. I didn't finish high school, and unfortunately I don't have a formal education. But I do have an open mind, and I have a voice. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar labeled Trump a racist. I'm Michael Jordan, and I'm here with Hillary. I said that because I know that uh, Donald Trump couldn't tell the difference. Regardless of the fact that Trump never mistook Kareem to be Michael Jordan to begin with, a Muslim American unleashed a bizarre tirade against Trump. Donald Trump consistently smears the character of Muslims. A leftist DNC action committee member was prowling the floor threatening to interrupt Hillary's speech with a citizen's arrest for election fraud and money laundering, while the reports questioning the DNA parentage of Chelsea Clinton couldn't be ignored as the daughter of Hillary Clinton and quite possibly Webb Hubble introduced the Democratic candidate for president. Hillary Clinton. Hillary's voice rattled the DNC. Bernie Sanders and I will work together to make college tuition free for the middle class and debt free for all. Wall Street, corporations, and the super rich are going to start paying their fair share of taxes. An evil, demeaning tone promising lies upon lies. Lies she had perfected when she and Bill raped Haiti in the guise of doling out humanitarian aid as their pay-to-play scheme grew in ferocity, or flip-flopped on her political base regarding the environmental aspects concerning the Keystone Pipeline to line her own pockets, or covered for a major arms transfer to ISIS, while U.S. Ambassador J. Christopher Stevens and U.S. Foreign Service Information Management Officer Sean Smith Smith were brutally murdered. But in true Hillary fashion, she may very well enter the DNC on the heels of one botched investigation, only to be faced with the possibility of a brand new one as she enters the main event. WorldNet Daily reports, some say an IRS investigation into the Clinton Foundation is just desserts, given the evidence the couple went in the White House, used the nation's most feared agency to target their political enemies and others who inconveniently crossed their paths in the 1990s. As the Daily Caller News Foundation reported Wednesday that IRS Commissioner John Koskinen referred congressional charges of Clinton Foundation pay-to-play activities to his tax agency's exempt operations office for investigation. The initiative is being led by Representative Marsha Blackburn, Republican of Tennessee, who sent a letter she signed with 63 other Republicans to the IRS, FBI, and Federal Trade Commission, charging the foundation is lawless. Now it's our turn. Hillary must be stopped. And I don't mean that lightly. Hillary represents nothing less than a foreign enemy. We are hanging on to our sovereignty and our beloved constitution by our fingernails, whether the citizens of the United States are aware of it or not. Those carrying the torch of free speech now won't be around to say, I told you so, if Hillary enters the Oval Office. Hillary's rap sheet doesn't lie. A vote for Hillary is a vote for the annihilation of this 240-year-old experiment in freedom our forefathers and foremothers handed down to us, for better or for worse. John Baum for Infowars.com.
Hey, you voting for Hillary Clinton? So what are your big issues? Are you for gun control? Yes. Eliminate them. Yeah. Take them out of the hands of the people. I trust Hillary. Hillary's the best. Go Hillary. Disturbing. Disturbing. Who are you voting for? Who am I voting for? Yeah. Clinton. Nah, I ain't giving you no change. <laughs> I give you no Come on, buddy, please. Vote for Hillary. Trump is not going to get the vote. Disturbing. We got the Peace Bernie bike coming down here. Uh, yeah, Bernie is like the best candidate I've seen. People are trying to climb over the fence now to get into where the DNC is taking place. Of course, they tried to shut him down because it's rigged. As far as I'm concerned, there she's clear. Hillary Clinton is cleared from all charges. And I am for gun, gun, gun control. You don't have our vote, you don't have our money, and Trump's gonna flatten you like a pancake, Hillary. Obama's totally awesome, we're gonna miss him. F you, Hillary Clinton. What you've got is big giant mega banks funding a bunch of communists and cop killers and other organizations that want to start martial law in this country and derail our elections. Nazi scum! Nazi scum! Nazi scum! Nazi scum! Well, dude, I, I mean... Communist man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you been to Bilderberg? Yes. And and was it not I mean, in a while? Not in yeah. a while. I mean, is it overblown? I think so. <laughs> Do you think it's just kind of something left over from kind of the cold? Well, I, I don't. I don't know. Hello. We well, talked about Bilderberg. It's no big deal. Yeah. Have the demons been exercised? The old old rhinos. Yeah. Who thought it would happen this fast? I want to say you're my favorite comic. Oh, I don't like it. If you think the awakening we've seen so far is big. This planet and the globalists have not seen anything yet! Yeah. Yeah. Do you know who's taking money from Big Pharma? Hillary! Everybody! Who oh, Donald Trump has taken zero dollars from Big Pharma? Hillary. I stuck you on that one. Do you have anything else? Fuck you! Great comment! She's undefeated! And as you can see, there's a protester right here who's dragging a burnt American flag. The way I look at it is that the, the liberal plantation is boiling over. Very hostile, very profane group. And just got cussed out for just wanting to ask him a simple question, what they're doing here. Isn't it funny how it always seems to end that way? There's no actual debate. They're the hearsay mafia, and when I destroy their false narratives and talking points, they have to degrade themselves to insulting me. Get off the stage, you fat fuck! Get off! We're in Saudi Arabia, you dumbass! We talk about that all the time! We talk about that all the time! Get off the road! Third Blossom, I am a friend, you know that. Don't, don't, don't touch me again. Do not touch me again. I was you understand? Sure I'm friendly. Yeah, do not touch me again. Well, sure, I want to touch you. You do that in your drill. Would you mind telling us what your role is and what your, uh, yeah, what your role is and what you're here for today? I'm here to do makeup. Oh, okay, that's cool. Um, now, what if I told you that uh, Trump's campaign was uh, attacking Hillary's campaign through Google, and uh, if you try to search presidential candidate Hillary Clinton, that nothing comes up? What, what do you think should be done about that? Um, who cares? <laughs> okay, well, that's good because because that's that's actually not true. What's actually happening is that uh, if you search presidential candidate Donald Trump. That, spe that specific term, nothing comes up. If you search presidential candidate Jill Stein, her picture comes up, paraphernalia, Hillary Clinton, same thing, Bernie Sanders, same thing. Um, so what do you believe, what do you believe uh, should be done about that? I mean, that's, that's like free speech there. I don't like these interviews. <laughs> it doesn't have to be anything heavily philosophical, just, you know, real simple. Um. Google is privately owned, right? Well, that doesn't give them the right to infringe on free speech and uh, uh, access to information freely. Welcome to the media. Thank you. So what we have here with the, um, the uh, fascistic makeup artist is just accept it. 
This is the theme here. It's it's a growing reality. Just accept it. Just accept it. The hypnosis, the psyops, the repetition. Just accept it. Just accept that Hillary Clinton is the nominee. Just accept that Google is censoring information. Just accept that Facebook is censoring information. Just accept that there will be terrorist attacks every single day in Europe and the United States. Just accept it. This is absolutely unacceptable by my standards. And this is why the globalists will take over. Because everybody's just laying over, like Bernie Sanders. Just the way Bernie Sanders did, flip-flopped. That's what's happening with the whole of, <laughs> of um, Democrats. And even some Republicans just laying over. They don't think they have a chance to win against the big machine, when the fact of the matter is that the big machine only works if we comply and people need to be aware of their own power and the makeup artist is a prime example of a lay person that doesn't believe in their own power so this is Gabe Gold Diamond more reports to come infowars.com My name is Marta Fedorio and I'm with the Ukrainian American community and I work for the Ukrainian American Ethnic Council of the Democratic National Committee. And we are out here trying to get the word out to the American people that Trump is going to not, is just a disaster for America and he's going to be a disaster for Europe because he is teamed up with Manafort, who is now his campaign chair, who is a Putin ally. He does business with him. Trump has started doing some things through his sons already. We know that. And we need information out there through the media that Putin is controlling our media even by these leaks. Well, let me ask you about the leaks, because you mentioned that you believe that Russia was involved in, in these leaks. Uh, but when we look at this, and you're talking about media collusion, you know, we, we've seen in the content of the emails, we've seen collusion between Politico, between the Washington Post and others with the DNC. Uh, do you think that the emails are uh, not, not true, that they've been doctored, or are you talking about the release of them? In other words, do you have a problem with the content of the emails or the fact that they're released? The fact that they're released proves that Putin is behind it because he is definitely, it's in his favor to have Trump win. So that's a fact. Now well, the content, the content, we don't know the real facts. Uh, the FBI is investigating. They could have been doctored, slightly edited. We don't know. But we know that the fact that they were released to favor Trump means Putin is behind it. Let me ask you uh, about the, the other email issue, okay, the one that Hillary Clinton had. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of concern, apparently, within the Democrat Party about the fact that national security was compromised. If you believe that the Russians were able to get the emails of the DNC and release those, do you, are you concerned about the fact that she put top secret emails on her server that, that would be available to the Russians or to individual hackers or to any uh, friend or enemy of the United States? I am concerned about that, but I think that there has been a lot said about it that you can take it either way. She was not, she said herself if she had a choice to do it again, she wouldn't do it that way. I think she did that for expediency. It was easier, it was faster. And I don't think that, according to what I have read, I don't think that there were emails there that were considered classified at the time that she was The FBI that. director said there were, they were sent and received as classified emails. He was very emphatic about that. Yes. So you think he's lying? Possibly, because he is a Bush appointee. He is. And he did not recommend that she be indicted for that in, infraction. So it could be a little bit of gray in between. Well, you know, I, I followed the NSA whistleblowers, and right. one of them in particular, uh, Thomas Drake, they came after him after he had uh, been a whistleblower, and they came after him for four emails, none of which were classified. As a matter of fact, uh, they were things like a schedule of a project that had long since finished. They said, well, you, this should have been classified, and you should have known it was classified, and they came after him for possession of a classified document. They had another document that was similar to that, 
and they had him up for 35 years for four documents. One of them was, you know, encryption is your friend. It was a very generalized thing. It was not. It was not classified. They classified it that day, and then declassified it three months later. I mean, how do you feel about this double standard, where you have NSA whistleblowers looking at 35 years in jail? Uh, the the uh, case blew up in their face as the day be the day they were going to trial because that Monday uh, is when they dropped it. The Sunday before, they had 60 minutes to reveal that. How do you feel about that versus the way Hillary Clinton was treated? I really can't speak to that because I don't know the facts. You basically just opened my eyes to that case, the whistleblower case that was then dropped. But I know that Hillary Clinton has been vilified by the press, has been investigated numerous times. Look what they did with the Benghazi hearings. All the $7 million of taxpayer money that was wasted and she was not found guilty of anything. Yet you will have the media and people in the press saying that she should go to jail or whatever else they were screaming at the RNC. But we do know that she had these, uh, these classified documents that were sent and received on her email server. And we do know that John Deutsch, who was a CIA director for her husband, Bill Clinton, when he was president, uh, he had classified documents on his personal computer. He was facing jail time before Bill Clinton pardoned him, and they removed his security clearance. Now, we have Hillary Clinton, who did far more than that for a much longer period of time. And I mean, how, how does she become president with security clearance when they removed the security clearance for John Deutsch? I can't answer that because, like I said, there is so much in there in the media that we really don't know the real facts. One person says this, another one says that. Uh, we really look at what George Bush did. He led us into an illegal war by lying to us about it. Has anyone investigated him for that? England already has. Great Britain has investigated, and they have found that Tony Blair was given false information and that was where he went with that decision. Oh, I agree. We have a, a long tradition in this country that if you're powerful enough, you walk. Yes. Okay, you're not going to be yeah. investigated. But I mean, when we look at the situations that, that the DNC is talking about in terms of Russia and the emails, that's not something that's been proven. But we do know how people have been treated. Former CIA director, NSA whistleblowers, how they tried to put them in jail. We have many other cases I could, if we had the time, I could go into. But they are treated very harshly and, you know, put up for, for very long prison terms. And yet Hillary Clinton, who was handling thousands of emails, instructing people to remove classification so they could send it, is allowed to keep her security clearance, is allowed to continue to run for president. She's going to be getting a security briefing if she wins a nomination. She'll be getting security briefings the end of this week. How do you feel about that? I feel that I can trust her to be the most competent president that we can have at this time. She is trustworthy in the in the fact that she is competent, she is knowledgeable, she has the right uh, demeanor, the presence of mind, and I think that's where her trustworthiness is. Okay, all right, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, David Knight for Infowars.com here at the Democrat Convention in Philadelphia. Well, Margaret and I are here to discuss the terror that's all over the world that Hillary Clinton alluded to in her speech last night. Of course, a lot of this terrorism is thanks to her policies that she set in place that are, you know, of course, they're not her fault. She had nothing to do uh, with the fall of Libya, of course, even though she proudly joked about it and bragged about that was one of her great accomplishments. But she's saying, you know, we've got to deal with this terrorism that we're seeing all across the world. Well, if we want any kind of indication of what America is going to look like under Hillary Clinton, just take a look at Angela Merkel and what's going on in Germany. She's a female president, you know, just like Hillary Clinton. And it's all about love and inclusion and open borders. And we're stronger together and we can just love away the hate of this ideology. But that is totally delusional. And in fact, now we're actually seeing citizens, uh, even in the UK and Germany, taking it upon themselves to volunteer to take out this terror threat because of the abject failure of their government. So you're absolutely right. There, there are striking similarities between Chancellor Merkel and Hillary Clinton. They're gross mominous narrative, if you will. I am so sick and tired of hearing about how our open border policy doesn't directly impact our personal safety as citizens of this country. And of course, Hillary Clinton didn't mention terrorism in her speech. I mean, Leanne, she's taking money from the Saudis, a state-sponsored terrorist, 
terrorism group, if you will. 11 of the 19 of the hijackers were Saudi Arabian. Uh, we know this from the, the heavily redacted 28-page 9-11 Commission report. And obviously, she's not going to mention terrorism at all. She doesn't think that our mass immigration and terrorism on U.S. soil go hand in hand, which is very similar to Angela Merkel and her policy. Germany has had a very explosive week. So Hanover, if I could just take you to this one specific case, there was this mass police raid in this hotbed area, 400 volunteer police officers, many of them volunteer, not even state police, took it upon themselves because they understood that this one mosque was heavily radicalized and, uh, you know, a, a just a, a bed of ISIS supporters and fighters. Many of them were going to and from Syria and Iraq and fighting. They raid this. The pictures off of the Daily Mail are explosive. They're bashing in the windows of this place and raiding it because they understand that these people are, have been on a watch list for many months, but the government isn't doing anything about it. They also raided eight separate apartments in this area. The youngest person that they arrested was 15 years old. They found a map, a school of evacuation plan, um, plans to do a mass shooting at his school. Um, he, of course, was a, a Syrian refugee. And these people are currently being held. And the shocking part of this story, so these 400 do this raid, they take it upon themselves to detain people that they know are going to be committing acts of terror in their country. And get this, Angela Merkel's speech the following day, it will make you physically sick. It's just unbelievable what she says. Unbelievable where she's basically throwing them under the bus and, you know, saying that this isn't like us, this is not this inclusive policy, which is what we're hearing, you know, here in our country mm -hmm. as well. Of course, we had the, the MP of the Green Party come out and, and say, you know, why couldn't the cops just, you know, take do some kung fu and get that ax out of the, why do they have to kill them? You <laughs> know, this, where axe. is this sympathy coming from? And, uh, you know, as a woman, they're trying to say that this is going to be great because the female energy we bring in is going to have this, you know, mm -hmm. sympathy and empathy for these people. Mm -hmm. And frankly, that's not what we need right now. That's exactly what she does. So just to remind people that there have been a string of attacks in Germany over the past 10 days, uh, three that you and I have covered personally and largely based, um, they're all asylum seekers, number one, either Syrian, Pakistan, Pakistani or Afghani. Um, Merkel holds this conference in Berlin to which she says human dignity is at stake, basically, that the principles of giving asylum to those who are politically persecuted, that that is the German policy under the Geneva Refugee Convention. It will stand. And it's in direct contradiction to the 400 officers that risk life and limb to go in and rid this area of, of jihadis. And it, it's remarkable. It doesn't go hand in hand. She's, she's trying to control the narrative and say, you know what? Our open war policy has nothing to do with the terrorism that's happening and right. uh, we're gonna we're gonna be proponents of human dignity if you will right and let's not forget you know we got um, Zuckerberg on a hot mic saying that he was gonna help her mm -hmm. to curtail any uh, any people critiquing this refugee crisis there on Facebook <laughs> heavily controlling the narrative uh, in her favor the BBC of course they can't figure out the the motive behind that Syrian refugee that wanted to blow himself up at a concert there. And they, they actually say in their BBC headline, Syrian migrant dies in German blast. Mm -hmm. Just a random blast in Germany. Mm -hmm. He's just walking along, has explosives strapped to him, hoping to do a massive amount of damage. <laughs> but it's no fault of your own poor little Syrian refugee boy. <laughs> so we see all of this narrative being controlled. And here in France, of course, they've seen some of their own terror attacks. Now they're mauling a ban on foreign financing for mosques because they can see how people are getting radicalized there and they're hoping also that in the future imams will be trained in France rather than going elsewhere to be trained and then bringing that radical ideology back to the mosques. Right. Well, it's Saudi Arabia that hasn't taken a single Syrian refugee. I just want to point that out. Um, there was an article a couple of months ago where they offered to build 200 mosques in Germany for the refugees as their part of helping the refugee crisis. Will you tell me how does radicalizing further refugees that are already radical by the time they get there helping in the refugee crisis? It's, it's just unbelievable. None of this stuff makes any sense, but people are awake and you can see the striking similarities between Merkel and Clinton and their open door policy and what it means for you and I if they're not stopped. Absolutely. And we are, we already see the writing on the wall. The FBI director, James Comey, has already come out. He was uh, talking to a cybersecurity conference uh, on Wednesday saying that it's going to come to the U.S. 
Uh, we're going to see this diaspora of terrorism like we've never seen. Not all of the Islamic State killers are going to be killed on the battleground. Um, so they will be more terror. In order to defeat ISIS, we're going to have to see more terror attacks in Europe and America. And we know this. And they're basically telling us. So, of course, now what we're seeing uh, is they're going to have to um, start hammering down on drones because they're already kind of prepping us for the fact that in Syria, in Iraq, they are using just off the shelf drones mm -hmm. to carry makeshift bombs. And so, of course, people have fear that they're going to uh, attack people in Britain here. Also, big stadiums and things here in the U.S. Chemical weapons experts are claiming these killer drones could be fitted with uh, mustard gas. And of course, if you recall, one of the attacks in um, Germany, just sort of outside of a migrant center that didn't end up harming anyone, thank goodness, but they had a bunch of aerosol cans in them that just didn't explode properly the way they wanted. But I mean, imagine those things could have even been filled with chemical weapons. So, I mean, we have to take this very seriously. And the fact that people are thinking that we have evolved to this point in mm -hmm. humanity where we're able to love away all of the, the evil that's out there, we're just not there yet. Like, I see what you want with the love Trump's hate thing, but mm -hmm. there is a lot of evil coming our way and mm -hmm. they're just preparing us for it. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard um, one argument, this mass immigration, that uh, Democrats are pushing down our throats um, is that it sort of levels the playing field racially. You know, people that have that have had a political stake in the country that have a major voting bloc that traditionally are conservative or libertarian, it's a way to sort of over time dissolve that, if you will. And, you know, it's there's an underlying strategy that, that comes with this, and it's very troubling. Um, people are awake, though. And uh, she did mention immigration in her speech. She spoke specifically, I'm speaking of Hillary Clinton now, she spoke specifically of uh, Donald Trump's wall, of course. And then she had a Muslim father who'd lost a son um, offer his pocket constitution to Donald Trump, which was Which don't bizarre. forget, just a few years ago, there at the DNC, they were making fun of <laughs> anyone who actually had a pocket constitution. Right. <laughs> and now it was the speech of a Muslim American coming out and saying, you know, how dare you, Trump? My son died uh, fighting for this country. But that's the thing is it, it, Trump's not talking about American citizens. Mm -hmm. And yes, there are plenty of Muslim American citizens. Here. Right. He's not talking about they don't care about facts. They just want to make such a division in this country. We need to set the record straight for people. He is speaking, specifically speaking out. I've listened to so many of his speeches and Clinton's, by the way, because I want to be fair and I want to be able to understand the narrative coming out of both of them equally. He is talking about the unvetted mass influx of uh, refugees pouring in the country that the government specifically is denying or they're lying about in numbers. That's what he's speaking of specifically. He's not attacking American citizens. You're absolutely right. I mean, it's just incredible. How come you and I and so many others <laughs> out there can understand these speeches before they're garbled up and mm -hmm. put through the lefty progressive machine where they're just put? I mean, in a, I mean, we don't have enough time to get into it. But can you even believe the after parties after Hillary's epic speech and all the mainstream media is there Leon. toasting oh to Hillary gosh. Clinton? I mean, they don't even care. They're not even trying to hide the bias anymore. There is nothing more corrupt than this. I'm so glad you brought that up. I know we're out of time, but you to see Wolf Blitzer dancing at a delegate party for Hillary He's Clinton dancing drinking. on Liberty's grave. <laughs> well, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. And we will see you here again Monday at 7 p.m. Central.